All across the ice belt, there's a common species that is chased by anglers, the crappie. Oftentimes, anglers travel hours down back road logging trails in pursuit of the best bites. But the truth is, the biggest crappies and the sickest bites are all much closer than you think. They're all located in the Twin Cities metro area. In this series, we will be pursuing the biggest crappies caught on camera, all within a 60 mile radius of downtown Minneapolis. I myself am an average ice fisherman. That's why I've recruited two of the best ice fishermen in the Midwest, Matt Waldron and Adam Griffith, to help me on this endeavor. Our crew will aim to educate, entertain, and ultimately help you catch the biggest crappie in your life. Stay glued and stay tuned because we're on the hunt for megas. Welcome to the Crappie Chronicles. The Crappie Chronicles is presented by Vexlar and filmed in collaboration with Amped Outdoors, Ice Hole Power, Thorn Brothers, and Clam Outdoors. Thank you for coming along this journey with us. Honestly, it's been a pleasure. I got a couple quick things for you real quick, so I'll get right to the point because I know you want to watch the video. Number one, myself, Griff, and Waldo are all going to be live on the Clam Outdoors Facebook page here in a sec. This video premieres at 7.30. We'll be live at 8. So right afterwards, swing on over there. Ask us questions. We're going to be giving away some of the tackle we use to catch some of these fish uh, as well as one of the pairs of gloves that Waldo kept losing. So get on over there interact with us we'd love to see you and the video will be available later if you just want to come watch it number two apparel you can see what i'm wearing here we got some long sleeve options as well as another hoodie option a lot of people have been ordering it a lot of people asking questions about it uh, the most important thing you should know is it's only going to be available until next friday that is february 5th after that, it's done. You will not be able to get it anywhere. So please go grab some. We appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, we love seeing all you people wearing the Crappie Chronicles apparel. I have also heard that it helps catch giants because I've gotten like 10 pictures of 16 pluses with people wearing those sweatshirts. So go get you some. Uh, lastly, before the episode starts, I just have to give a big personal thank you and shout out to Matt Waldron and Adam Griffith. You guys have watched them throughout this whole series. Um, this series is legitimately not possible without them. Um, like I've said before, I'm a decent ice fisherman, probably a little bit better than average. I give myself, I probably don't give myself enough credit. Um, but I would not be able to get on these bites, stay on these fish, film this series, or do any of this without them. So please go follow their social medias. It's all down below. Go book a guide trip with Griff. And uh, yeah, go, go give them a shout out because they seriously deserve it. They're the stars of this show and it has been a pleasure. So without further ado, I present to you The Last Chronicle. It's not necessarily that there's there isn't large fish everywhere else, but the metro for some reason, I would say that 60 mile radius around the metro has some really, really, really big crappies. The metro, in my opinion, has the largest. I don't know why. I, I want to say the lar I want to say the largest crappies in the state besides rivers. Me, Griff, and Waldo work a lot of different shows and interact with a lot of ice fishermen. And what we always hear is everybody's like, oh, I went up north, or I went out west, or I went down south, or I went wherever, but they left the Twin Cities to go chase crappies. And uh, we're always looking at them like, why? I don't drive more than an hour in the winter to go chase crappies. There's really nice quality fish in the metro and some giants as well. So uh, that's why we're doing this for you guys, to show you guys that the potential's here. The metro area itself has the genetics. And there's just so much bait. Like there is so much bait in all these lakes for these fish to eat. A lot of these farm lakes, um, the, they warm up faster, they stay warmer longer, longer growing season for these fish. That and 
to be honest, not a lot of people really know how to fish large crappies out here. Uh, they get stuck just fishing basins or they get stuck fishing the bottom and not fishing up high in the water column. They get stuck not fishing good weeds um, and wasting time in bad weeds. So uh, that's kind of why we're doing this is to teach you guys and educate you guys on how to find and pursue those larger fish but also um, just to catch numbers as well too. I mean, that's a lot of what we strive for is just going out and catching fish, so. I would just say the biggest accomplishment would be to teach people, so. And then, you know, secondary catch those larger fish. Welcome to The Last Chronicle. That's a giant. Giant hunting only. Good morning and welcome to uh, The Last Chronicle. Uh, today will hopefully be an epic finale for all of you. We've showed you a lot of really quality fish in this series. We've shown you one freak, a lot of 14s, a lot of 13s, a couple 15s. But today's about getting that that absolute freak of nature. Um, so today we're out on a lake we've been to before. We were here probably about a month ago. Uh, they weren't really ready yet. The ice is thicker now. They got more cover and. Uh, it seems like they, they've started biting. So today is all about giant hunting. It's giant hunting 101. We're gonna be chasing freaks. We're gonna have you along for the ride. So the sun's just coming up. Griff's hopping holes already. Waldo's punching holes. I'm gonna get a GoPro on and get after it as well because we need a freak. There's one around here. I just saw him on my deucer. I am starting, so Griff's starting with a spoon, targeting those bigger fish. I've got a big drop kick jig on, which is also one of our favorites for big ones. And I got a blade jig. And Waldo's using a blade jig, so we got our three favorite presentations out for giants. We should probably put a tip up or two out, but I think we're all pretty excited to just get fishing because of what today might what might happen after 20 or 30 minutes might get a tip up out but we got to locate them first oh he came back right as i reeled it up big one big big one. real big one got him i don't think he's very big look at that we got tiny. Man, that got my heart racing. He appeared way too big on the Vexlar for how small he actually is. Choked it though. See ya. We're on. Ooh. You had my heart racing, buddy. So, because we are giant hunting, that also means we are gonna utilize all of our lines today. So I am currently setting up couple eye fish pro tip ups with the full flat head and a minnow on them about six feet off the bottom I'm just gonna double check the depth real quick to make sure it's where I want it it is all right so we're gonna get this guy set up Waldo's already caught or had two bites on a full minnow Griff's caught a couple on a spoon with a minnow on it so Naturally, this seems like the best idea. Now we'll leave the bale open and wait for a giant. 
down and he just throttled it. There's two of them. Giant, 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 giant. I don't know if it's a crappie dude, but it's big. He pegged it once. There are two marks too, dude. Oh God, dang it. I was putting this tip up down and uh, right when I got back here, there was a mark sitting under the hole and I was like, man, that's a big mark. That looks like a crappie. And then I, uh, I dropped this tip up down to mark it or to just get it set. And right as I dropped it down, these guys heard me say, oh my God, it's back. And I was holding the line in my hand. I didn't have the GoPro on when it first hit. This is Slimer. But uh, <laughs> he, um, he freaking hit it while the line was in my hand and I panicked because I was like, I don't know what to do. I got three pound line on in a hand. I can't hand set it. So then he spat it and uh, I grabbed the rod and pulled up and it just came right back and just came up and throttled it. So I didn't even I didn't even have the tip up down. I just set the hook on it. But man, that got my heart racing because there's some 16, 17, 18s around here right now. And I thought that was one of them. So <laughs> that scared me a lot. Well, that was, I mean, way to start the morning. I don't well, really like pike. A heart attack too. Yeah, I don't really like pike that much, but that was pretty cool. Never well, caught. I've never had one eat while I'm putting a tip up down. That yeah. kind of shocked me. But. That was uh, that was a uh, that was a heart racer there. Yeah, <laughs> you're telling me, dude. I put it down and the thing just like it didn't rocket at it. It was like that steady come up that crappies did. So like I got it back up and he just steadily came up to it and it was just wham. So I drilled him. It was like this is a crappie, but oh, no yeah. cigar, no cigar. That's a decent one. A little whitey. Well, that guy. About 12 inch white crappie right there. Super long. Raced up and just crushed that blade jig. Here's a little guy for you. Nice little white crappie, actually. You can tell it's a white crappie by the bars. <laughs> but uh, that's a good sign. A really good sign got a big old noggin on it um i had a school about seven fish on the graph and they weren't doing anything with it all of a sudden this one i hardly even marked it just raced up and cracked it so I caught that one on a just a blade jig white blade jig with a silver fleck back to it and a full-size fathead minnow i'm just sitting there kind of just waving it up and down um and yeah that's a decent one nice way to start Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, that was a good start. Yeah, nice start. Need yeah. much bigger. Yeah, we need about twice that size and we'll be happy. You know, get a 24 inch crappie. That'd be kind of nice. So, a little bit of a shameless plug here. We've been grinding this whole series and one thing I've really forgot to talk about and I need to is, a lot of you have reached out and say you want to go fishing with us, you want to get out and that'll happen eventually. But also a great option is Griff is actually a guide. Um, he guides around all of the metro area, Minnetonka, the smaller lakes around, walleyes, crappies, bass, whatever you want to do, ice fishing, open water. Um, and I know he's got some free slots here to finish the ice season. So if you want to get out and chase some crappies, get on some of the bites where you just hammer them like we have uh, and have a chance at a fish that kind of changes your life, definitely reach out to Griff. All of his information is down below if you want to reach out to him, but definitely get out on a guide trip with him. I assure you he's a great guy, great guy, great fisherman. You'll learn a lot and you will have fun. There's one. Feels better than that first one I caught because he is. Nice little guy. There's a whole pile of them down there. Just inhaled the drop kick. Still looking for a bigger one. They're meandering around. Got him. Help, big, oh, got him. 
giant. Holy balls, Waldo. What do we got going on? We got a big crappie. It's not huge, but that's a good one. Probably go what? Maybe 15 or something like that. We got a bump right here. Let's see how she goes. Okay. Mouth closed. 15 and a quarter. 15 and a quarter, right on the nuts. Nice. They get bigger, but this is what we're after. Beautiful white crappie. It, there's potential it could be a hybrid. Normally what we notice on the gill plate is that the hybrids will have a, a black dot on them, but I'm pretty sure this might be a white. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on some of these bigger ones, but uh, that is a nice 15 and a quarter right there. But we're gonna let this guy go. We've been, my hand's frozen right now because it's been in the water so much. We're trying to keep these fish from having frozen fins. That's the most important thing when you're catching these big ones is that you try to keep them in the water as much as possible so their fins don't freeze. A lot of people don't realize when a fish has frozen fins, they just don't grow back super quick and it can actually really hurt the fish. So my hand's soaked right now because it's been in the water, keeping this fish alive and you know making sure that this fish drinks. And I'm gonna hold him here until he kicks back. I don't wanna, I don't want him to just all of a sudden go down if he's not, you know, feeling good. But uh, yeah, Woo. see, that's why you hold them there. You just kind of let them go on their own time. But that one crushed the blade jig. So I, what happened was we're kind of fishing a, a basin area right here, and we're in about 14 and a half feet, and I had a probably like six, seven little guys. They weren't even interacting with my minnow at all, weren't even touching it. And I was just kind of waving it, you know, above the school. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they all just vanished as a big mark just came in and clocked it. It knocked a bunch of slack in my line. So when I got a hook set on it, my rod ended up way up here because it knocked like a foot of slack in my line. Um, but that was what we're after. That was a good one. Um, I'm hoping you know, we got a good bite window going, but we, we got a lot of fish here. We're just having to weed through some of the little ones. So we're using really big baits, hoping that it'll keep those little ones away long enough for us to have a giant move through and crush it. And that one did just that. So I'm gonna go rebate, get another fathead minnow on, and hopefully we'll catch a couple more bigs like that one. Nice, freaking giant. That's a big one. Okay guys, it's about 11 a.m. Griff and Waldo have been catching more fish than me, and they're using a spoon with a minnow. So uh, Waldo's using a blade jig with a full minnow. Griff's got a different spoon on with a minnow head. So I went to a pin head, um, different color than them, just to keep diversifying, but it just really didn't seem like those fish really liked my drop kick very much. It seems like they want something much more aggressive. So we'll give them a spoon. Just like that. Thanks for watching the Creepy Chronicles. I think my drag's too loose, guys. It is. So Griffin Waldo just left to go check out some other stuff. So I'm manning the fort. And the last time this happened, you guys may remember, I broke off a giant. So uh, yeah, we got good vibes going on this time. Good vibes, good vibes. Gonna redemption time, right? Need to tighten the drag a little bit gonna give you a little bit of a midday update it's about noon now um, since Waldo's caught his giant we've caught quite a few little fish it seems like a spoon is definitely uh, outperforming need a spoon and a minnow but 
we haven't gotten any more big ones. We haven't really seen any more big ones, to be honest. Um, we've spent a little bit of time rebating tip-ups and everything. Yeah, I mean, we're going all out here in this last episode. We're separating, we're covering water, we're trying to really get a freak for all of you. The one Waldo got was really big. There's definitely bigger ones out here, and that's what we're trying to capture. So I'm going to get back after it. I have to grab another minnow, but uh should be fun. They like to bite at weird times out here, so got to always keep a bait in the water. Big one? He said, yeah. Grab the camera. Surprise us, please. What is that? This is a crappy one. That's bigger than the one this morning. Talk about a buzz kill. Well, we've been grinding away. It has been really slow the last hour, hour and a half. We thought uh, Griff hooked up with a Mega. We were wrong. That's a bummer. Stinky green fish. Gotta keep fishing. I just lost a giant, dude. Or two's like, I just lost a giant. Yeah, right before I got that one. Dude, that was a big one, too. And he comes screaming up at it, just destroyed it. That was such a big fish. All that drag screaming, that was the fish. It wasn't a pike either, because none of these fish left. I was dropping it down and he just come on the screen above the three that were there and just annihilated. <laughs> yeah, we kind of drilled some more holes, looked for some fish because we, uh, weren't really getting anything and well it's paying off I lost one big one and then um, we've seen a couple more so I'm gonna keep at it another little update it is about 2 30 now I think um, we had a really slow like two hours um, from about noon to two it was really rough Griff and I grabbed an auger and um, walked probably another hard hundred yards away from where we are. We found this little area where it seems like they're stacked up. Griff lost a really big one. Waldo had a really big one eat. Missed that one too. Um, they're acting really funky, so it's been really tough. But that's chasing these big fish. Like These really upper class fish are once in a lifetime fish. And we're trying to get one on camera, which is extremely difficult to do. Um, we do have one good fish today like a 15 and a quarter is a really good fish some people put that on their wall um but we're after one a little bit bigger we're really trying to do it for you in this final episode uh, i need to put this camera down because i need to get back after it because we got about an hour and a half two hours left of good light and uh, these suckers should eat at some point in time but you just never know and that's why we keep coming back that's why they call it fishing not catching so we're gonna keep trying. Better one. This guy's really gold. Look at that colors. It's really unique. It's like a northern Minnesota fish. Really gold. He came in like four feet under the ice and just absolutely ruined my day. But beautiful fish, nice, nice healthy eater. Not quite the freak we're looking for though. So see you, buddy. Dude, I thought it was a giant. Cause I was just jigging five feet under the ice and I saw a streak and just <sighs> Hey, come here, come here, come here, hurry, hurry, hurry. 
grip, grip, grip. Come here, Ray. I come here. I just missed one. Yeah, he didn't actually eat it all the way. Okay, drop down. Seven foot down. No, he ate it. And when I set the hook, all he had was minnow. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. Dump it. Dump it. Dump it. Dump it. Dump it. Eat it. Come on, man. He whacked this. Not. Not what we're looking for. Crushed it. But not the right size. Got ourselves a white, white crappie. Sun's starting to go down. Fish seem to be getting a lot more active than they were in the middle of the day. So, optimism's getting a little higher. But see you, bud. Well, our GoPros have uh, seemed to. Well, Bart's is screwed up. Mine ran out of SD card. I just had this one flying. Nice little white crappie. Yeah, that was a nice one. That one flew in and cracked my fathead. Actually, I'm using a really large fathead now. As you can see, that's a pretty big mineral. And I got another one down there already again. Hang on a second. Things are happening. Things are happening. Yeah, it's, so far it's been, you know, a successful yet difficult day. Um, it, uh, the bite hasn't been like on fire or anything so it's been a little slow but um we did get a big one so i am very happy about that was it the exact size that we were hoping for no a little short on that one but it was still a good one oh, where to begin um yeah, so I know a lot of you diehard Crappie Chronicle fans are going to watch this all the way through, which I greatly appreciate. Um, obviously, the goal of this episode was we wanted to go out and get one of the biggest crappies ever caught on film and the biggest one in this series. But this series isn't scripted. We go out and fish the bites as they come, and it just didn't happen. Um, did Griff hook into it? potentially uh we had in that area towards the end of the video where griff lost one we had two or three of them that were hanging around that area and they kept coming in on our vex they'd eat waldo's minnow and come off or griff lost one and they were just being really tough and that's what those 18 inch fish do they're the hardest fish to catch in the system they are so intelligent they played the game they know what's going on and you have to trick them and we did not trick them um but still a good finale, still a good episode. I couldn't be more pleased. Now, the number one goal of this series all along was to really teach everybody that you don't need to go for six, eight, ten hours away from home to go get on a crazy crappie bite. There's a lot of really, really good bites right in the Twin Cities area. And the whole 60 miles from Minneapolis is you don't have to drive more than an hour to really go get on a good bite. A majority of these bites, I did not drive very far. And when you really think back on it, it's crazy, actually, the amount of big fish we did catch in just like a month time frame, along with what you've seen a bit of and not a ton of is the amount of strikeouts we had. Like, I, I try my best to show everything I can through this lens and show you the whole process. And the truth is, there's a lot of really, really tough bites out there that it'd be pretty boring if I tried to make them into a video. So I tried to do my best to kind of encapsulate everything and really show you all the full process. Um, secondary goal of this series was we wanted to catch one of the biggest crappies you've probably ever seen on film. And uh, obviously, I don't know if we did that. The, the one Waldo got was really big. We did kind of get an unofficial measurement on Waldo's one from episode three. Um, we laid it on his rod really quick to just get a quick idea. There was a lot of people around, it was cold. We wanted to get the fish back in the water as quick as possible because that's what was most important to us and our bump board was a long ways away. Um, 
laying against his rod, it came out to be around that 17 inch class. But we got one really big one in episode three and we kept trying to get a bigger one. And this show isn't scripted. We go with the bites as they come. And ultimately we just couldn't get one. And I'm not gonna say we failed. I'm gonna say we ran out of time. Um, Griff and Waldo have ice fishing tournaments and other obligations they have to take care of. And I have to head south to go film some stuff for work. So honestly, we legitimately just ran out of time. I believe if we could have kept going, we would have eventually got one. So that's not an excuse. Uh, we failed to get like an 18, but it's kind of hard to say you failed when you're looking for the, I've never seen a crappie that big. Griff's seen a handful, Waldo's seen a couple. Um, so it's really hard to say you failed when you're chasing a fish of a lifetime. Uh, it's just kind of a swing and a miss and you just go out there and you keep swinging. So ultimately that brings me down to everybody's asking about a season two. And this is basically what I'll give you. This whole idea came around as a passion project for myself, Waldo, and Griff. We just really wanted to show this. Uh, some sponsors got on board, which made it really kind of financially even possible for me to dedicate as much time as I did to it. So you need to go support these sponsors that uh, got behind this because they're really the ones that made it happen. So if you go support them, comment on their stuff, and tell them you want to see more of the Crappie Chronicles, uh, we can ultimately maybe make that happen. But the reality of it is, is myself, Griff, and Waldo need to sit down. We need to kind of um, decompress a little bit. It has been stressful. It has been a lot of work. And uh, we just need to figure out if we really want to do it again because I feel like it was such a great project. And I, I just don't know if I want to push it. So if you want to see it, leave a comment down below if you want to see a season two if you want to see a different type of series please let us know i honestly do not know at this time if there will be a season two but if there is i hope you'll be there for it and enjoy it um and that lastly will bring me to i appreciate all of you who jumped onto this channel so quickly just based off of this series I'm not done making content. Uh, I'm never going to be a YouTuber that's putting out your pond fishing or just once every once in a while videos of random off events. There is always going to be content coming up on this channel. There will be different species. There's going to be tournament bass fishing. There's just going to be some traveling stuff. There might even be some golfing. Um, all my stuff is going to be dictated around series and trips because I want to put as much effort and cinematography and just epicness into everything I do on this channel as possible. So if you stick around and pay attention, there will be more stuff coming. All I have left to say is thank you for watching the Crappie Chronicles. Myself, Waldo, and Griff could not be more appreciative for all of you. And uh, yeah, it was a great series. We had a lot of fun. And until next time, we're on to the next one. The Crappie Chronicles is presented by Vexlar.